Well, Jamie, it's a pleasure to talk to you this evening. Let's take you back to January 1999. Tell us what happened. Well, uh, my friend, myself and, and my, my very good friend and climbing partner, Jamie Fisher, went to climb a, a mountain in the French Alps called Les Droites uh, by its north face. And it was a hard climb, but it should have been fairly routine for us. But it was on the second day of that climb that we got caught out by uh, an unexpected and vicious storm which ended up pinning us to the mountain summit for an ordeal that was to last for five days. And you ran out of food and water. How did that feel? Describe what that time was like. It was, well, obviously it was really tough being on the mountain for that kind of length of time. It's, it is hard, no food, no liquid, um, and getting weaker by the minute. But, you know, we were strong, we were fit, and most of all, we had each other, keeping each other going, you know, and that, that's what, kept us alive so long. But ultimately, there's, an, there's only so much you can take. And did you always believe you would be rescued? Because I understand there was one failed rescue attempt, wasn't there, before they finally managed to lift you off the mountain? There was, and that was gutting to see that rescue come so close. Um, so we, we, we certainly, we clung on to that hope that rescue would eventually be able to get us. But, you know, ultimately, you know, you can't survive forever in, in conditions of, of that severity. We're seeing pictures now of you here once you've been rescued off the mountainside. Of course, very sadly for Jamie, it was too late, but you managed to get off the mountain, but you had incredibly bad frostbite in both feet and hands. How were you feeling at this point? Yeah, as you can see, I was in a bad way, and at this stage I was just in shock. There was, there was no other way of putting it. I was just in total shock. And so how did you cope when you woke up after the operation to discover that you had lost both hands and feet. How did you feel? Just total disbelief to begin with. You just can't take that in. The, the fact that you, you're looking down at your, your limbs and seeing that where your hands and feet had been were, were now nothing, just, just bandaged stumps. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even begin to imagine how I could ever lead any kind of normal life. But remarkably, you did, yeah. and you picked up all the basics of normal life, and beyond that, within a year, you well, it... were snowboarding. <laughs> yes. How on earth did you get from that point to the second? I, I first I had to learn to, to do all those everyday things, getting myself dressed, washing myself, um, feeding myself, but then I was able to graduate from that once I could walk again on my prosthetic legs. I started to take on bigger and bigger challenges, and I've never looked back Absolutely since then. incredible. And then you decide to take up mountaineering again. Yes. And to climb the Matterhorn, no less. What made you decide to do that? Because it's such a, an important peak. It's the most iconic mountain in, 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 in the Alps. It's the famous triangular mountain. And we have some pictures of you training here. I mean, yeah. quite incredible. Running, climbing walls, phenomenal. What was the hardest part of the training? Um, I think mentally, it was, you know, physical training's fine, but it's being in a mental position where you can actually believe that this is going to be a possibility and you know that everything's been prepared and, and that, 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 that the mountain's not going to throw up any nasty surprises. And I really wanted to be sure that, that I was ready for this. None of it's easy, you know, it's all difficult climbing like that. There's no bits where it's a nice easy walk, it's all climbing. It's one of these situations that, that requires absolute concentration. Uh, non-stop, you know, for the full duration of the climb. You can't let, your, let, let yourself slip at all because, because one slip could be fatal. So how, how different was it climbing with no hands and prosthetic legs compared to when you'd climbed previously? It's what tough. What did you have to do differently? It's tough. I mean, I, I climb with bare hands, as you can probably, or bare stumps, as you can see in the footage there. So it's clinging on with with you know, just using my skin and, and, and it's, it's rough and it's sore and it's painful. Mm, cuts and bruises, I imagine. Yeah. And, and then I can't... Upper, upper body strength Upper recovered. body strength is important. And then with the feet, I can't feel them. So I've got to be able to see where I place each, each foot. Every time, every step I take, I've got to see it and check that it's firmly in position.